because when your thumbs are under, if you don't have a super strong false grip, your transition is going to be shit, right? Remember, the main thing that people fail on the muscle up is this, the transition. And if you're starting the rep, None of y'all stopping me, don't need the axe, chopping trees, planting seeds, planting schemes, crossing eyes, stopping T's, lines are blurred, I cannot see, before I die, I'm top three, before I die, I'm top three. He's telling me how many reps I gotta do. Okay. Okay. What is going on, YouTube? You are here with the Prez new setting today. We're in the OG Wingate Park. This is the first park that I actually ever competed in over 10 years ago. This is literally the mecca of calisthenics in New York. You guys want to train, you guys want to find the best calisthenic athletes, you guys got to come down to Wingate Park. This is where you're going to learn from the best, right? And the last time I was here was two years ago, my one-on-one -on -one battle, battle of the bars, and I, you know, I got defeated in my last portion of the routine, which was 25 muscle-ups. And it literally, it literally crushed me, right? It actually made me stop training muscle-ups for over a year. And as you guys know, I've been getting back to the routine lately, really trying to train my muscle up, getting back to those clean reps. So today's video, back to where I failed last, and it's gonna be a special video today. I'm gonna have a special guest with me, and it's gonna be a full muscle up breakdown, muscle up tutorial routine today for you guys. So if you guys are trying to learn the muscle up, clean up your reps, or just you know wanna understand the technique of how to, ma of how to master the muscle up, this is the video you guys wanna watch. So, let's get a little quick warm up set going. Do a nice little dead hang. Increase that time under tension right here. Stay tuned, let's see who we got with us today. All right, guys, like I said, I'm gonna have a special guest with me today. And this is a long overdue collaboration. I got my guy Igor, Zero Gap Gravity Training. I'm sure you guys have heard him before. He's definitely an OG on Good Money channel as well. So I've been following Igor for a couple years now. And I've been watching him get really, really good in calisthenics, right? Really improving his overall skills, his endurance, and you see his work ethic. He's at it every day. But he wants to improve his muscle ups. He's a big guy, it doesn't come easy for them. So today, He's gonna master that movement, and we're gonna get down to the basics, the nitty gritty, and we're gonna break it down into the simplest movement patterns, and he's gonna be a pro by the day's end. I hope so. Good to see everybody, you know, Elvis, it's been a while. Yes, and we do. see yourself, Elvis also is a strategist. I can see that he has an explanation of every movement in every part of the workout. So I'm honored to be here and to listen to his advice to learn together. Long story short, uh, this, this summer I learned how to do muscle up, but then they became sloppy. So, and then I asked myself if I can do maybe up to eight sloppy muscle ups, but I can't do one clean, then why should I go that direction? So this, the reason we are here today is to share with you an opportunity for beginners or people who haven't trained that movement to learn the slightest details and try to succeed as fast as possible. Let's go. Let's get it. <laughs> All right. First things first, before anything, I'm going to throw a band on and I'm going to watch Igor do some band assisted muscle ups. I'm gonna give you, I'm not gonna give you a heavy band. I'm gonna give you a relatively moderate band. All right. And this is just to warm up the nervous system, get the movement pattern down, right? And if I see his form is off, we're not gonna do many reps of it. This is the, so this is the fat bar, by the way. Yes, and these bars here, Wingate, extra thick, making the reps tougher, more on your grip. So one thing, all right. So you see Igor right now, he's going thumbs under. I would recommend first thing to switch up. For me personally, I like thumbs over, especially on a fatter bar. Because when your thumbs are under, if you don't have a super strong false grip, your transition is gonna be shit, right? Remember, the main thing that people fail on the muscle up is this, the transition. And if you're starting the rep with your hands like this, with your, fit, with your wrist already under the bar, you're making it that much harder to get over because of friction and just because of movement and biomechanics in general. 
So starting in more of a full script, which with thumbs over on a fatter bar, in my opinion, is easier. So I want to see wrist high. Wrist high? Wrist high. Wrist high. What, what about the width of the grip? Okay. I, as of recent, have been going wider. But if I look back at my, you know, my best possible muscle ups when I was doing weighted muscle ups in my prime a few years ago, much now, right? Just slightly outside shoulder width, because the wider you are, as you start to struggle in that transition, more stress on the elbow. The narrower you are, that elbow will take less, less stress and will place more emphasis on the shoulders and the triceps. So you don't want to over, you know, go wide and you'll start chicken winging because again, it's going to cause a lot of stress just due to the leverages on the elbow. So just outside shoulder width. Good. Let me see. Look, one swing out, and I want to see you muscle up. Muscle up. Very big swing there. Very big kick. Right? What was it necessary? No, absolutely not. <laughs> but that's okay. That's just to see form, and we're going to take it from here, and we're going to keep progressing, guys. Let's get it. So what Igor did again, which he notices himself, which makes him look sloppy. He goes. And he does a big kick out, right? Which almost takes away the effectiveness of the band, right? Because now, with that band, remember, band tension. At this point, it's going to give you the most resistance up. You bring that band down to here, it's going to shoot your body backwards, right? And it's going to give you opposite forces, which is what we don't want, right? We got to be technical with the move, right? Because when you first learn it, it is going to be sloppy, right? And all you have to do is clean it up. And what your body wants to do over time is become more and more efficient at a muscle up. That's why most people in the beginning, it's a strength move, right? You may not see a beginner getting 10 reps. But then as you get more and more advanced and the reps get cleaner, people can do more and more. Because it's less neurologically demanding and it's more just a technique and just learning that movement pattern correctly and becoming very efficient at the movement in general. So. One thing we're going to teach Igor now, we're going to start, is he's got to learn this proper technique. Because that's going to give him literally the coordination needed. Yeah, you're going to try. So it's literally, I want you guys to think of being on a swing set as a kid. When that swing is going up, your feet are out. And as you come back down, you tuck your knees in to go back up. And then as you come back out, you swing your knees forward again, right? Legs open up, back towards the sky. When you come back down, knees are in. This is going to be the opposite movement pattern is that. Igor is going to swing forward with his legs straight like a pendulum. Like literally like, you know, a pendulum like that. You're going to swing forward. The second you start to come back, you're going to bring your knees in now. Op almost like I said, opposite of being on a swing. So as you go, actually, it's actually quite similar to being on a swing. Because you're going forward with your legs straight, you're coming back with your legs up. Let me see you try it for reps. Okay, so watch. No bending in the arms, right? That's another thing you got to watch. Come, come on. So we don't want to bend yet, right? We just want to learn. That's where people go wrong. We don't want to do any pulling yet. We just want to learn how to get force generated from the kick. So watch, no bending in the arms. Okay. I was bending my arms. Right? You, were, you were trying to bend and pull. Oh, I see. So we don't want to bend and pull. We just want to learn how to get, because you'll notice, as people start to get clean with muscle ups, they'll swing out, and then their hips will pike up, and that's what gets their body that momentum to get over, right? So this is just training your body to understand that pike and that kip up from the hips. Better? So we gotta get it more, all right, come on, start over. So think about almost like a straight arm lap pull down, right? This is the motion on the top. Stand down on me. We're gonna practice this on the floor. Ready, one foot. We want to lean back like this. Be more coordinated. Open here. Lean your body back. So this is the this is the positioning at the locked out portion of the muscle up, right? The swing. 
So you want to get... So now try to do these for reps. Open up. That was good. So you're going to feel all this stretching out right there. Straight leg, don't bend. Yeah, so it's just leaning back. There you go. That's it. So now, combine that. Combine that just like this. One swing. So it's all coordination. You clean this up, the muscle-ups are going to come like that. I'm telling you, it's all theoretical. Pra practically, it's different, but let's try. So, hey, uh, like I said, listen, listen. This movement, I learned it 12 years ago, and when I learned it, the same. It was, it was like Chinese lettering to me, right? I couldn't understand it. It took time to learn that actual movement pattern, but once you master, so because look, this is the motion. At the end of a lockout, when you're swinging, your body's gonna look like this on a muscle up. When you pull up, you're coming just like this. So, <laughs> let me see. Uh, both arms, both, both legs. Both legs. Hold on, hold on, I, I kind of feel it. So like look, again, remember, loose from the arm. You're bending first. Swing out, and then as soon as you come up, so look, let your body, just swing, just swing, nothing else. There you go, there you go. And then you keep generating force like that. That's it. That was way better. So your coordination was on point. You wanna be at the end here, which is what you were. Coming back, you were here. One of the things that I feel going wrong on my muscle ups, my core is like all over the place. That's key. So I used to tie my feet together. Yes, I would tie my shoelaces together so my feet cannot fall apart, right? So I usually, I'm like, yeah, like trying to, 100%. You're trying to kick the air to get your body up. But that's Very not common. because I, my core is that bad. No, your core is not weak at all. It's just, your okay. body's not used to, it's full body tension. I've talked about this from day one. you got to be able to generate full body tension, right? That's why everything calisthenic. I used to hate it when, and I've been doing this for 12 years, I used to hate when people would post a move and it would look so sloppy. Because like, don't say you could do something. I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just uh, wanted to say that I feel my core now, like a core exercise. I, I, it could, everything is generated from the core, right? Especially, yeah, it's right. It's more rest. yeah, that's what we need. we need. We need hundreds of these. We need to learn this movement pattern. We need to ingrain it in the nervous system. You see, good, thumbs over, beautiful. Perfect, you see, look, you're getting higher and higher now. But now, try to do it without the pull. Try oh, I'm keep, still pulling. You're still pulling because you're ready to do the muscle up. But try to do it and just try to get higher I feel and higher. So tight enough, tight try enough. to get higher and higher just with your legs, watch. I think we we'll... Just with your legs, look. I think I finally know the secret. And then, again, that's just teaching your body technique. Because over time, you're not gonna get that, you don't want that swing, right? You want a clean muscle up to look like this. One swing off, pull up, don't and easy. over, easy, right? And then look, we don't want the second rep to go like this. We're not doing a big swing like that, right? In the beginning, yes, but over time, remember, it's cleaning up that negative. No, let's go. Let me, uh, in this one, my friends, I'm gonna try to tighten up the core, because my muscle out, again, I can feel a lot of that. Like make your body one single thing, you know? Exactly. Same one as unit, one unit. One Kinetic unit. energy running through the whole body. That's it. Perfect. Perfect. That was That's it. it. Now. That's it. Now I'm going to teach Igor. Because he could rep, right? He could do, if I say, oh, Igor, go for muscle, he'll get one. But he might do, you know, he might think about other mechanics to get his body up. We just want his body to be able to get from the locked out position over the most efficient way possible. And that's not gonna be 
using brute force, right? We're not gonna just try to muscle up and get our arms over, right? We wanna generate some momentum, some kick, some force from our core to get over the bar. So once you get really good at this, what I recommend is to start trying to get a muscle up, because like I said, you can do them already. You wanna stop, start just like this in a swing and look I'm not swinging like this I'm not generating I'm letting my body and gravity do all the work I'm letting gravity and my body do everything I'm just swinging off naturally right and then we want to learn the timing so this is the once our body is here in that front position with naturally that's when we want to learn to just pull our body back over so watch I'm going to show you the ways that you mess this up, right? People do this. Pulling too early, I was still going forward. So watch, if I'm still going forward and try to pull, I'm never gonna get over. Because now this force is the opposite of me, right? So now, I'm gonna demonstrate if I pull too late. Pull too late there. My body already crossed over Ooh, too late. the bar, right? So you gotta pull, it's all timing and technique. Literally, the second my body hits that max point on the pendulum, I'm generating that momentum that Igor just learned with his legs, and then we're combining everything that we already know with a muscle up, is to pull our body over that bar. So watch, I'm gonna swing, I'm gonna give you guys one swing forward, one swing back. Second swing forward, and then right over the bar. Ready? One, back, one, up. It's just getting that timing. And then once you got that down, you just, your, your body's gonna learn how to get those, that little pike up from the legs, and your rupture's just gonna get better and better. Try with the band? band? Yes, yeah. for sure. Just, again, try not to, we don't want to exaggerate and do too much. Oh, better. Now, come down, do another one. I'm going to stop your legs where they should stop. Come down, pull. So, on the come down, you want to let full lockout. Make sure we always get a full lockout. If we don't come full lockout, you're gonna be neglecting force to get back over. Let me try a couple more, but uh, I felt like you were your bed is a little bit. So I... Is that a big difference on the like, This is a big bar. So, like I said, this bar is gonna be harder to learn on and train on, but I would prefer to train on it because it's gonna give you a better translation to the other bar, right? He's gonna get it, he's gonna get it here today. 100% he's gonna get body weight reps here, for sure. And this technique here alone is gonna translate over to when he goes to train on a thinner bar in general. And how do you feel with thumbs over? It's fine, let, let me try, right? Yeah, get another one. And also, so when I go down from it, do you recommend to go right away down? So you wanna come, so with the band, and that's why my hand's here, right? You want to make sure at the bottom, what you're doing, you come down and you let your back arch, right? You remember, your, your body's got to be straight, not this. This is what's messing you up. You're coming down and letting your feet fall behind your core. When you come out, after that first rep, when you're coming down, your feet and your body stop here. And I don't want you to pull crazy with the legs. I want you to use just that one motion. Pull. A little too much with the legs. Now, just trust me. Pull. Maybe I'm just don't have enough strength to. No, it's not that. It's not that. I, I honestly think it's the band that's messing you up. I'm serious. Because it's more, it's, it's more effective if I just spot him. I'm just gonna get behind and I'm gonna give him that momentum up. And all he has to learn, it's his come down swing, right? So he has to get better at this. He can get the first rep up pretty well, but it's that second rep when he loses that form and technique. So watch. What he does when he comes down, he's going too much like this. 
and his body is like this. You see how you're, you're letting your feet go behind you at times. We gotta be straight in front. So we have to get better again. So just practice right now. I wanna see you do this. 10 seconds, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then just pull for one, try to get that. Do try to coordinate that and generate power from a 10 second swing. Body loose, 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 loose. Relax, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, pull. So you gotta get it, you gotta be able to generate a little more force there. That's where it's coming, right? Now I'm going to be able to spot him. But another thing about the muscle up, guys, if you start failing on it, and, you know, and you're training it as a new, you know, as a new movement, you can't do it. The way we're doing it right now, the way we're doing it right now, it's almost going to be counterproductive to him, right? Because we don't want him to go into a set fatigue, right? This is not, it's not an easy movement, right? It's a skill movement right now, and it's going to be more strength-based. Remember, any exercise that you can't do more than five reps in a set with, with good form, it's gonna, obviously going to be more of a strength building, right? Because you're, you're literally the motor units and your fibers can't fire enough force to do more than five reps. One, you're not strong enough at it. Two, you don't know the skill yet. Just like learning a deadlift, learning a squat. If it was Igor's first time squatting, doing a set of 10 with you know maybe 225 on it would be really, relatively hard for him. Just because the technique, right? He may look, the squat reps might not look the best. He might be able to move the weight, but it may be like, you know, shitty reps where he's going quarter squatting or his knees are buckling in. So it's not like he's gonna learn a squat the first day, right? So you have to train your body, the proper movement mechanics, the proper movement mechanics for literally thousands and thousands of repetitions or hours for that matter. Like these are skills that you gotta ingrain in your body, right? And, and in order to learn something, you'll hear people say you gotta do 10,000 hours and you're a master at something, right? Well, ego's gonna have to put in that amount of time. And like you said, he got discouraged and wanted to stop training muscle up. And to be honest, I mean, he, he could've he could have gave up on it, but if you wanna be a calisthenic athlete, you gotta train that movement, right? And that's just gonna be a mind over matter thing. He can, he know, I know he can do it. I see his performance in the gym, I see how he trains. He's got the stamina and he's got the strength. Again, it's just him learning that movement pattern. It's new for him right now. So again, in the beginning, it's gonna be sloppy. And I'm doing this long talk right now to give Igor a nice break so he's fresh when he goes up again. Let's go. So no bad. I'm gonna spot you. So all I wanna see you do, we're gonna, we're gonna practice this rep before we actually do it. Come off, swing forward. You're gonna pull on that one and I'm gonna spot you over. All right, so come down. So your rep's gonna look just like this. Igor's gonna literally be on the bar here, just like this. He's gonna get one swing forward. As soon as he hits that point, he's gonna go for the muscle up. I'm gonna be right here behind him to spot him over. So it's gonna be forward. I'm gonna be behind him, spotting him up. And we're gonna get over, just like that. You want him to go to muscle up. Yeah, one swing, and then you're gonna go for the muscle up. And I'm gonna get you over the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Stay straight. Come back down. Do it again. Pull right away. Let's go. Come back down. Stay straight. Do it again. Pull. Wow. Me too. I better save a little bit. That was interesting. What? The way you spotted it. <laughs> well, one that's tall bar, but that's inevitable, right? Another technique I'm going to show him right now that I can teach him. It was it the little, little, little like spot? I, I honestly, it wasn't too much of a spot, right? I didn't give him, it's not like I used, you know, a ton of force to get him over that bar. I literally just pushed him, kept him going with the momentum that his body was already generating, and I just got his body over the bar, right? No, this one he didn't have a struggle up, no, you know, no chicken wing reps, we don't want to see that right now. One other thing he's going to learn now, I'm going to let him go up however he wants to do it. I'm going to see, let's try a muscle up. It's the coming down again, which is going to be key for him. He's got to keep his body straighter and tighter. 
It wasn't bad. So again, we, you still get a big, you know, you're still using a lot of, a lot of like, a lot of like hip and, and knee drive, right? Which isn't bad at first. You're still generating a lot of force like that. But we want to end. You got to be able to get that second rep, that coordination, boom, boom, down pat. We're going to move to a, sh a slightly shorter, slightly thinner bar here. This one. This one. Perfect. Good. This is a perfect view. Ready? Uh, he, swing first. Swing forward. Yeah, some good ducks. So, so same thing. This is going to be a perfect height for him, right? A little high for me. But literally, so if he was a little shorter, this is how I would tell him to do it. Stand one foot from the bar, lock your arms out. Remember, that first swing, it's got to be loose, right? You're not trying to be tense in your body until you start for that pull. So, one mistake people make is, They'll do this right away, right? Remember, we don't want to see any bending in the arms. Everything tight, full body tension, feet together. So if I was if I was to do this muscle up right now as a beginner, if I were just training it again, one foot from the bar, I generate that swing forward naturally by this one foot away, right? So I'm jumping to the bar, my body swings forward naturally, swings back naturally, right? I'm not doing anything, I'm not form, performing any momentum on my own, right? It's all natural. One swing forward, back and over just like that right and then we come down watch my feet when i come down i'm keeping my body tight let me make sure my, my camera shows the feet watch when i come down i'm not going crazy with my legs i'm not doing this none of that right so up, and now if I'm gonna go for a second rep with coordination and control, here, right back up. So we don't wanna get crazy swing forward, because the more you swing forward, remember, your body is on an angle. If you're swinging out like this, you know how hard it's gonna be to go back like that, your body's gonna actually wanna go behind the bar. You gotta go around the bar. So one swing forward, not too much. Oh, better. That was good. I don't know. I'm missing something. Pain? No, no, no pain. No pain. Just uh. So I tried to grip, but this one. Uh, you went thumbs over there? Yeah. And it felt uncomfortable? It just felt like I don't have enough, like, you know, strength or something to pull it, to, like, to pull it forward. So, I mean, you got over, right? But again, don't let your. So the second you get over here, you're already losing the bottom half. So if you watch your video, the second his the second Igor gets over here because he's thinking so much and using so much force to get over, his whole lower body is already disengaged. Right? That's where the uh, that's where you know the ugliness of the rep or not the clean the cleanliness is missing, right? And that's where he that's where he loses that second rep aspect, right? Yeah, because with the band, he should be. Look, if this band's too light for him, I'm going to give him one heavier band. But I'm going to show you how the resistance band wraps the look. You just focus on here? It's a little, we may have to go back to, the, to that bar for the band. But let's see. Oh. See how his legs came out? See why that happened? Because he's doing too, again, his legs aren't staying together and he's kicking too much, unnecessarily. So remember, every time, every time he goes in the band and he brings his legs up higher, he's, get, he's taking away tension. Because remember, you want the band to stretch with you and release with you. So Igor is doing this on his second rep. And look what happens. When you bring your knees up, 
you're taking away that tension. You're right. You're so right. you gotta yeah. keep it straight, pull, and now on that second rep, even with the band, is more important, right? You gotta keep that tension high. Long tension, you're just working about the pull. When the band is on, none of this, right? Because you can once your legs come up, see what happens? Your feet come off the band and you take the resistance away. So Igor's gonna go, we're gonna go to the higher bar. Again, the thick bar. He's gonna practice. Just with a heavier band, just that pull. Because he has the strength. Again, it's coordination and technique from the lower hand. Let's go to the high bar. And I'm gonna give him one band higher. It's the good thing about having multiple bands. What about chest to, to, uh, to bar pull ups? Not efficient. I see you training them often. Not and I'll, efficient? I'll explain to you why. Okay. And uh, just give me direction for, for my journey. Alright. A lot of people think you gotta pull, you gotta train a chest to bar pull up to do a muscle up. Because they think a muscle up is just a straight, strict pull. And again, once you get really good at it and you know you become a master at the movement, sure, you can start really hanging, dead hang, and literally generating a extreme amount of force and pulling straight up. As almost if you're pulling a chest to bar pull up. But the mechanics for a beginner are totally different because I could literally dead hang just like this and pull chest to bar. But I can't dead hang like that right there and get myself around the bar. Maybe I could, but again, it's I would still be do, doing a totally different movement. I'm not trying to pull to the bar. I'm trying to pull around the bar. So having that little swing, which is not necessary for a chest to bar pull up, is going to be necessary. So we went one band heavier real quick. So uh, just grab it. I'm going to keep you. I'm going to stop your feet. I'm not going to let you go past me. So swing to me, and then I literally want you to just pull and only think about less legs, less legs. You got it, I'm telling you, Igor. Trust me, you can do this. Let me, let me get in the band, let me show you. Move this a little closer. We don't want now. We don't. We want to get rid of the swing. So we're gonna just build him that technique now. So this band's very strong for me, right? So for me, dead hanging, dead stop, right? No effort there needed, right? Nothing. Coming down, easy, right? Igor could do this. You just gotta learn how to get that that technique. So I want Igor now. You're gonna set up off this. You're gonna go both feet in. You're gonna swing forward once. One swing forward, keeping his legs straight. I want him to pull without doing this. And I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna be behind you. So just, just try to really generate a lot of force just from your upper body. Don't worry so much about your legs. Keep them straight, right? Keep them straight. I'm gonna come behind. One swing. Pull. That was it. Come on, come back. Step back. So he's there. He's there. Again, one very big mistake people make is they'll get over the bar and they'll lose the engagement of the legs. And then, remember, once you're swinging up, naturally, if you don't have engagement of the, of the legs or the butt or the core, your legs are gonna wanna just swing back in front of that bar so you're, your body's gonna go up, your legs are gonna go forward, and your body's gonna come back down around the bar, right? It's all about engagement and just being coordinated. So try that one more time, and really focus on squeezing here, pointing the toes, and just staying tight here when we get that transition. There it is, you're there. All right, rest. Rest a little bit. Rest I think I'm, I'm getting it, I just need to like, just keep practicing. And so one thing I'll say, right? When I first learned them, you're right. Yeah. The consistency of the movement is going to be super key, right? Because I would learn them I, when I learned it. I would let's see. The first day I caught it, right? The first day I ever did one muscle up, 
maybe within the first whole hour of training that day, I caught maybe five muscles. Right? I would do one, fail, rest. Do another one, do another one, fail, 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 fail. Until, you know, until that hour was up and I knew like, all right, I'm, not, I'm failing too many times now. I'm not getting any more today. Next day would come. Maybe I would get six, but I would, I would get six good reps and I would fail another 20 times. And that would literally be a pattern. And then maybe the third day I would come and I would get no reps. I would be super fatigued. I would be so fatigued maybe on the third day where I wasn't getting any reps. So one, recovery is important for the movement, right? Because again, you're training your, your nervous system and in the beginning the movement is gonna be very demanding on the body in general, right? You're generating, it's not like doing a set of 50 push-ups or 20 pull-ups. Similar to doing chest to bar pull-ups, you have to be able to generate and you know, call on those type two motor units from the jump, right? We're not, you know, we're not doing volume beforehand, we're not doing reps beforehand you know, to, fire up the, to fire up the movement. You want to do one muscle up, you got to fire up all those type two motor units and you got to be able to recruit them and literally get them to fire up and get your body over that bar for one rep and if you want to do multiple reps for multiple repetitions. So it's off the jump, it's similar to like doing an Olympic snatch, right? And it's literally the same movement mechanics. Look at a muscle up. Muscle up, you start in a dead hang here, you end on top of the bar in this position. Look at a snatch. You start a snatch like this, you end a snatch like this. So it's the same movement mechanics, right? With a snatch, again, if you're doing a bar to you know, learn the movement pattern, it's similar to doing banded reps to learn the movement pattern. But once you start loading up that bar, once you start doing body weight reps, it's straight force production for every repetition of the whole entire set. So being able to recall on those units effectively and in one, new, you know, one motion is key. And again, these are all, I'm just talking to give him a break. Let's go, awesome. Let's try a couple, a couple more. Yeah, and then let's go. What time is it now? 11.20. We'll go, we'll leave here in 10 minutes. Five, 10 minutes? Let's do five, yeah. I don't think I get much. Uh, hey, bro, Broly and them, they say 11.30, it's probably going to be 12.30. Yeah, but the other kid is telling. I hope so. I mean, I hope he's not like that. I hope he's on point too. Yeah. That's it. Now, straight down. Don't, no, you see what you're doing already? Oh. Why are you doing that? I don't know. You see? Straight legs, that's his problem. He's always trying to move. Straight legs down, pull. And look, he's there. He got that chest back to the bar. And look, he's gonna be able to break down this video after, and he'll, he'll literally, he'll be able to watch, because this is what he did. He got a muscle up, then he went like this to go down. What is? Once your legs are bent, that, like I said, remember, he always likes to arch in the back, right? We gotta maintain full tension on the way down, and then as we pull back up, well, I'm not gonna pull because the band yeah. is gonna be there. So, here, you wanna be able to pull back. So when you come down, I always am so stressful about this, right? You gotta come down the way you want your body to look going up. Just like if you were to barbell bench press, right? Let's, say, let's just say you're, you're a bodybuilder, and you can't lift 225. But you could lift 200, and you could do 215 pounds for one. You can't quite do 225. But if I have Igor spotting me behind, he could unrack that bar for me. I could take 225 down. I wouldn't take 225 down like this. I wouldn't go lopsided. I would control it down the way a body weight, a, a, the way a bodybuilding rep should look. And then Igor would literally just spot me up, right? Because I can't do it. But the, the negative mimics the positive. There's no difference with pull-ups, muscle-up, push-ups, right? You're doing a push-up. You go down, it looks the same way as if you go up. You do a pull up, you go down, you go up. It's the same movement pattern, right? There's no need to switch up the muscle up either. You understand what I'm saying? I do. So the same way you, when you're starting, with your legs straight, and you get up, you want to come down, that same mechanic. I'm going to practice uh, watching this video. Let's try it one more time. Yeah, let's give it a try. And again, like I said, if it doesn't have, this training today, even if he doesn't, pull off a bodyweight muscle up after this. It will be so effective for the nervous system. He's gonna, next time he's gonna come, he's gonna remember these cues. Legs straight, not bending the knees, we're not breaking at the hips, feet together. And he could even use that cue, tying his feet together. Because once you start, once you literally tie your feet together, there's gonna be no more of this kicking in the air, no more of that struggling, right? You're either gonna get the rep or you're not. Because again, you're, once your feet are together, you can generate that, you know, that leg drive, which is fine, but you're not gonna be able to do any of the kicking or any of you know one leg apart, which is going to be super beneficial for cleaning up your reps. 
Hold. Great rep. Get it, get it, get it. Ready? Come down and then right back up. Up. That was I need to practice. And again, fatigue. <laughs> could have had, you know, may not be uh, may not be fully fueled this morning. Hey, remember, this is gonna be a very glycogen demanding movement as well, right? Especially, remember, training for strength in that one to three rep range with long break periods, five minute breaks. You're primarily going to be recruiting the phosphogen energy system, ATP, ATP and phosphocreatine, right? You're not going to really have a high glycogen demand. If you're, let's just say we're doing strict strength training, uh, five sets of three, five sets of three reps with a five minute break. Your set of three is going to take you about 20 seconds. You're never going to call on glucose to perform a 20 second rep set, right? It's literally going to be ATP and creatine. You're going to rest five minutes, so you're going to you're going to be resting almost. Five to one work to uh, rest to work ratio. You're going to be fully recovered. You're going to do another set of three. You're going to again pull on creatine and ATP because ATP and creatine stores recover within a three to five minute period. Now that set took about 30 seconds. Let's say we're doing a set of eight muscle ups, six to eight muscle ups. You know, a little more controlled. That set's going to take a little longer. More demand in the glyco glycolytic system. More glycogen demanding. But now if we're doing reps like this, remember we, we were going rep after rep, attempt after attempt. We never really took a long break period and we're trying to accumulate volume. Remember five sets of three is only 15 reps. To learn a muscle up and to learn that movement, like I said, movement pattern and to drill that into your nervous system, 15 reps is not gonna cut it. You gotta do hundreds of reps. So a productive session would be maybe 50 attempts at a muscle up. 50 attempts at a muscle up is going to be very glycolytic, glycolytic demanding, right? So it's going to pull on a lot of carbs reserves needed to perform the movement. Because again, it's an explosive type two force generating movement that you're performing for multiple repetitions to instill it in the body. So again, maybe he's not under recovery to early morning workout, or again, it's a Sunday. So it'll be end of the week, maybe fatigue built up. Oh, and one thing, like I said, I'll be very like strict with this. Do not train the movement when you're fatigued or tired, it's not gonna, you know, you're not gonna produce the best results. So I would honestly tell Igor, today Sunday, I wouldn't try the movement again until Tuesday. Give your body a day to, you know, rest from the movement and instill what we learned today. You can watch the video, and one of the best things you can do is just envision yourself doing it the right way now. Watch what we did, and then when you're home at night before bed, literally see yourself doing yeah. it clean. If you can see yourself doing it, you're gonna do it. That's all it takes. So. Thank you so much. I hope this was productive. That was for informative. You. If I just need time to do my homework. Exactly. Like I said, it's an it's an instructional video, a tutorial. He could do a muscle up. We've seen him do muscle ups before, right? We're just it's like myself. Just two weeks ago you guys saw me doing the one rep max muscle up test, right? I caught the fifteen pounds for one, failed on the twenty. It's not because I I'm not strong enough to do it. I haven't trained a weighted muscle up in years. The technique was off. I don't know how to hold the plate no more. The plates are getting thrown all over the place. So I, and literally, like I said, I got critiqued by one of the top muscle up athletes in the world telling me my, my grip was too wide for that particular movement, especially with the weight. So now if you see my last videos, I'm back to doing single reps. Single reps with the proper form that I want to do. And you see I'm doing 10 sets of one. Then I'm doing eight sets of two, you know. So I'm slowly building up volume day in, day in, day out. One day on, one day off, one day on, one day off. Multiple sets for multiple reps, multiple sets for low volume reps. So every rep is a clean, effective rep. So again, like I said, you gotta instill that movement. 10 reps in one day isn't gonna do it. That's why I do 10 on Monday, eight on Wednesday, six on Friday. Again, then I repeat, 10, eight, six, and each time I go up one pound. So this Wednesday is gonna be 10 sets with one or two pounds on me. Then Wednesday will be eight sets with three or four pounds on me. Friday will be six sets with four or five pounds on me. Then I'll be back to 10 pounds with 10 reps the following Monday with two pounds or three pounds on me. One pound previous than what I did the following Monday for the 10 sets. So you just slowly build up that volume and slow progressions. One pound at a time is all you need. And if you're just learning body weight, you don't even need to add weight. Just keep adding repetitions and volume and that's how you're gonna get better at it. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Stay tuned for Igor's progress. We're definitely gonna be collabing again, doing more routines. I'll turn my phone work. I'm gonna have him, I'm gonna go through a zero gravity routine with him one day too. And uh, you know, that's the one thing I also told you guys, when I'm training for strength, you know, I, I let my conditioning aspect, you know, fall aside. So lately I've been trying to stay conditioned, 
training for strength. So for me, if I do anything more than four days a week, it's just too counterproductive. My body can't recover from it, right? Because when you're training heavy in that, you know, three to eight rep range, weighted pulls, weighted pull up, weighted pulls, weighted dips, muscle ups, squatting, and then trying to throw in conditioning work, high volume sets, it's gonna take a lot of toll on the nervous system, it's gonna fry the body, so make sure you're not overtraining when you're trying to get better. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, we appreciate the support. If you're not subscribed to Igor's channel, you already know, subscribe to Zero Gravity. Like both the videos, they help YouTube share the video, promote them with the algorithm even more. If you have any questions or comment, leave it in either of the comment sections, we'll both get back to you. And like always guys, we appreciate the support. Peace out. Zero gravity and born natural. Sad story, I ain't here for a symphony, no sympathy. When I was on the bench, you wouldn't sit with me. Now I'm on the court and I'm balling, my time's coming.